Welcome to our online conversation. I'm Louise Turin. I'm a cultural activist and writer based in France. I'm currently working at the UNESCO Parisian headquarters on a program called The Slave Route, Resistance, Liberty and Heritage, and I'll be your moderator for the event, an event taking place within the Africa Dialogue series, which was launched by the Office of the Special Advisor on Africa at the UN as an interactive platform for policymakers, civil society, experts and the academia to discuss and debate about challenges and opportunities for Africa. For 2021, the African Union has chosen arts, culture and heritage level for building the Africa we want as the theme of the year. This is a theme incurred in Aspiration 5 of the United Nations Agenda 2063, which envisioned an Africa with a strong cultural identity, common heritage, shared values and ethics. The Aspiration 5 is a call for a cultural Renaissance, which inculcates the spirit of Pan-Africanism, tapping into Africa's deep well of rich heritage and culture to ensure that the creative arts industry is a major contributor to Africa's growth and transformation. Uh, now, introducing our three panelists, Sita uh, Bilemonsua, thank you for being here. You are a contemporary uh, visual artist from Zimbabwe. You have also founded the Netherlands-based IFAD platform and the Tamgiri Foundation, whose aim is to support and strengthen cross-cultural exchange, notably through collecting cultural cooperation and the empowerment of women artists. Thank you for being here. Um, our second panelist is Joy Mboya. Thank you. You are a performance art practitioner, a curator, and the executive director of the Godown Art Center, a leading nonprofit multidisciplinary art facility in Nairobi, Kenya. You have been the champion of ambitious program in your own country, including the annual Nairobi White Festival, Nine Week. And last panelist, uh, Giro Mesmo, thank you. You are one of the leading musicians of the Ethiopian musical scene. You also serve your community as a producer, an artistic director, and a music instructor. Uh, you have also been working since uh, 2013 to develop uh, an African musical curriculum for the Music Global Academy, a Berlin-based school that teaches and celebrates non-Western music. Uh, well, yeah, thank you all for having accepted uh, to take part in this conversation. Um, my first question will be for you, Citabile. Um, the main project you have been notably working on this last year is called the In Search of Ubuntu. Uh, it's an important post-colonial work which takes its roots in the dismantling of the Dutch Golden Age in imaginary. Uh, could you further introduce us to this project and uh, in which way do you think such works and cultural production can contribute to ill African people and black diaspora from uh, their history in order to build a greater future to, to build up the black world and the Africa we want? Thank you, Louise. Um, in search of Ubuntu is a search actually of, of what makes us human and what connects us. I began this project in 2018 in the north of the Netherlands, where I was invited to respond from an international perspective to a European cultural capital um, cities project whose aim was to solve the controversial issues facing Europe, among them migration, inequality, racism, and climate change. My, pro my proposed uh, response was to um, reflect on the causes of these controversial issues as it's not possible to solve them without getting to their root cause. And so this project is a reflection through the artistic lens on these controversial issues and their link to our shared history. My aim is to contribute to the, uh, to the abolition of the reproduction of violence, oppression, racism, um, sexism, exploitation on the one hand, and to bring to light and connect the dots between this history and the current state of our world from the perspective of trade with a specific focus on the East India and West companies. I chose the Dutch Golden Age as a point of departure because understanding the current state of our world and finding solutions to the, crime, to the climate crisis requires understanding how we got here in the first place. The important period of this important period of Dutch history also connected to 17th century American colonial history is vital in understanding the aftermath of the global power struggle between England and the Dutch Republic and the role this history plays in our current paradigm. To answer your question um, about how this kind of project can contribute to healing African people and these diasporas from 
their history, I find it important to emphasize that this history is not only a history of Africans and the Black diaspora. It's a shared history of the colonizers and the colonized. The problem is that the, the, the history of the colonizer and its impact has till now been invisibilized, which in turn ushered our current paradigm, where we are all trapped in the reproduction of violence, meaning racism, inequality, sexism, oppression, um, and exploitation, and um, worst of all, the environmental degradation. And so the healing of the African peoples, its diasporas, and the building of, uh, of the Africa we want is tied to this shared history. Thank you, Sitabile, for, for this answer. To, to continue on this reflection, I, I'd like to ask you, Gimron, a, a question. As a, as a jazz musician who obviously knows well and intimately the, the healing properties of music, in which ways do you think communities can uh, leverage on arts and culture uh, and heritage to build sustainable peace? Uh, uh, how is your practice and engagement uh, through the year in a, the 10th spans of Ethiopia promoting uh, uh, inter-community dialogue? we cannot hear you okay. yeah. yes i unmuted i forgot to unmute uh thank you generally music art uh, culture is by its very nature inclusive uh it's a shared it's a shared uh, thing but it depends on who who tells it um, uh, and depends on what it is used for either to uh, bring together uh, people or to divide people. Uh, music can be used uh, or other art forms can be used actually to bring people together and culture uh, and, and particularly in particular music speaks to the emotions and can easily uh, bring, uh, it is easy to bring people together through, through music than uh, uh, lectures or uh, other, other forms of uh, rational uh, ex explanations. Uh, being inclusive with culture and, and so on can bring uh, people together without having to be preachy, without having to uh, to be, uh, you know, without this, the practice having to be like a propaganda, it can be really uh, used very, very carefully to bring uh, people together. And, and in my experience, um, uh, the society that I, uh, living in Ethiopia that I come from has several... Uh, cultural heritage to share in the form of music, in the form of history, in the form of uh, uh, many things in a, in a tangible and intangible, uh, uh, both in both aspects of, of culture. Uh, music is a, a great part of that. And, and uh, as a jazz musician, when I uh, play my, uh, practice my, my music, uh, I try to be uh, as, as naturally inclusive of the various musical cultures that we have. Sometimes less is more. I use one or two elements in our music, in terms of musical modes and other things, but that is uh, one way of uh, preaching inclusiveness in terms of uh, culture. But thus, in today's life in the country, in, in, in today's um, uh, situation, it is uh, really uh, difficult because there's a lot of political tension uh, and this is when we really need music. Uh, for instance, I can I can name uh, a few uh, particular personal experiences in such regards. Uh, at one point, I was commissioned to uh, compose music for a very uh, small ad, which is a small commercial TV commercial, sixty minutes long, sixty seconds long, not even a minute, uh, just a minute. And uh, I was required to do um, high energy music. So I used the, one of our dance styles, one of the beats from the Southern part of Ethiopia, one of the musical cultures. And when the uh, clients uh, in, in, a, in a committee sat down to listen to the demo uh, that I was producing, they said, why did you use only one culture? Why did you, you know, use that culture? Uh, is it from that region, the product or whatsoever? And why didn't you use all the other uh, 
musical da da dance or beats dance styles uh, to be inclusive, to be politically correct. And I refuse to do that. I mean, I grew up on a society that uh, is inclusive and uh, even though I'm not from that particular region, I, um, I uh, grew up thinking that that is one aspect uh, mm -hmm. of my culture uh, musically. So, um, I mean, it's difficult to have every uh, uh, music beat uh, that the country has represented in 60 seconds. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's difficult to follow the, uh, what politicians do to culture. But in the contrary, music has to be there, culture has to be there creatively to bring uh, societies together. Actually, the social fabric was made or be as such. It is politics and other complications that devised it. We just have to reclaim it in a natural way. That's what I think. I hope that answers the question. Yes, uh, thank you, Guillaume. It totally answers uh, the question. And uh, I want to follow up by asking a question or, uh, to Joy, because on the same topic as art uh, and culture, as a communion, arts, culture, music, as a communion, you, you've imagined uh, a multidisciplinary uh, festival that's called Naini Wu, uh, uh, which is an annual Nairobi wide cultural event. Uh, could you further introduce us to this project? And uh, what is it fostering for the Nairobi, Kenyan, African, and global social spaces? Um, and to, to finish last question, uh, uh, you've obviously faced difficulty uh, and maybe still are facing difficulty, notably with the uh, uh, sanitary context that we are all facing to, uh, to put in place many rules. So we, we'd like to, uh, to hear your experience on that. Thank you, Louise, and, and thank you, Giroum, and thank you, Sitabile. Lovely to be on the same platform with, with, you, with you both. And I think as I listen to my colleagues, I'm hearing um, threads that, that, that are also in our practice, this idea of inclusivity, um, this idea of, of identity formation, contemporary African identity formation, and this idea of, of how does this connect to our pasts and how do we move forward to a future that, you know, is, is, is taking cognizance of that, but is also, of course, um, beginning to represent who we want to be, the Africa we want. Um, Naini Hu actually stems from similar questions. You know, we are an art center, and so we, we program, we curate um, activities and events for, for Nairobi audiences. And as we were doing this, you know, over a number of years, we noticed that the audience numbers were quite small. Um, and we began to ask ourselves what it was that we were doing wrong. Um, we began to interrogate the question of, of space, of the art center in an African city. What does it mean to be an art center in an African city? What is your connection with the community and your interaction with the community? So we wondered whether the space itself was not inviting or the space was not offering um, what people uh, connected with or resonated with. So we began to explore taking activities outside of the space. We took them out into the communities, into the neighborhoods of Nairobi. And in this process, we began to ask ourselves whether the idea of curating or programming only belongs to the arts professional or whether the community itself is actually a curator, a, test, a taste maker, can also be a gatekeeper, can also identify cultural markers that are important to themselves. So Naini Hu is an experiment and a festival that invites ordinary residents of a neighborhood in Nairobi to begin to identify for themselves those cultural markers that they would celebrate as, as points of identity within the Nairobi space and to invite others to come and, and, and celebrate that with them. Um, and in this process, we begin to understand as an art space um, things that we could not have imagined, because, of course, we, we cannot see through the lens of the audience all the time. But I think the other thing that comes out of this sort of exploration is really appreciating the city itself as a cultural entity, as a cultural experience. And in that process, questions come up, questions of inclusivity, questions of identity and belonging, questions of ownership, questions of, of cultural taste. Um, questions of, of, of who, 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 who includes and who excludes. Um, so this festival is really about that, and it helps us to begin to think about our role um, as an art space in relation to community. 
Now, in terms of what this means, I think, for, for the region and for the, for the global, I think it's really beginning to project different ways of, of engaging with community. When I look at Western practice, for example, you know, there are established institutions, museums and, and, and art centers where you have established curators and canons and practices that work in a particular way. And I think that Africa can begin to show other ways and other options where community and art can engage, um, that it doesn't always have to be in the space that is called the museum. It doesn't have to be in the auditorium that is enclosed, but there's other ways in which you can engage. And there's other ways in which you can, you, you can begin to program and curate spaces. I think that the, the, the difficulty, there's not a difficulty per se. In fact, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting um, framework because by inviting people to engage in creating the program, you're actually reducing some of the questions that would be problematic for you as an art center, which is questions of cost, um, questions of inclusivity, questions of timing and programming. All of this is left to the community itself. So if they want to program something in the night, that's when it will happen. If they want to do it on a Saturday morning, that's when it will happen. So it actually opens up a lot more possibility um, for, for community. Thank you so much, Joy. It's uh, it's really interesting, and my second question will be uh, for you to to introduce us to uh, to our to your beautiful uh, art center in uh, in Kenya. Yeah, um, I'd like to ask a question to uh, to Guillaume, um, and following up on this idea of uh, of social inclusivity and and uh, social in inclusivity also in uh, diasporic space because uh, I'm based in Paris. Uh, you're sometimes uh, based in uh, in Germany in Berlin. And uh, we know that you're, invo you're involved uh, with the Berlin-based school, the Music uh, Global Academy. Um, so you're, um, you'll tell us that you are um, involved as a, as a teacher there and as a, and as a curriculum starter, because uh, you are actually doing a very interesting uh, uh, program, um, which is... Uh, which is developing an African music curriculum for, for students, but also de developing one so it be uh, uh, one of the first and could be replicated in and, uh, and also uh, uh, integrated in all the school. Um, and overall, what does it mean uh, for us, for you, for, for Africa to, uh, to teach African music outside of Af Africa, but also uh, within Africa? Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, Louis, um, I'm based in Ethiopia most of the time. Uh, although I, music takes me around uh, and that I get to tour uh, uh, and work a lot with the German-based Global Music Academy, I, my base is in, in Addis Ababa. I'm active in the music scene, teaching here as well. Uh, generally, the Global Music Academy uh, the program uh, that we, with which we produce and uh, develop uh, music curriculum is about uh, uh, creating an alternative to uh, an existing or already existing uh, Western oriented music teaching uh, culture and tapping into uh, opportunities to, uh, to to have alternative opportunities to uh, to teach music based on one's own culture. Uh, when you come to Africa, we we don't have uh, uh, such music teaching culture, uh, but through oral tradition and through practice, uh, that's also one valid form of uh, teaching. We have uh, our music going on uh, from generation to uh, generation uh, and uh, because because of um, uh, history we, uh, we 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 take a lot of the western methodology well cultivated for centuries of course for th uh, the classical the western classical music uh, the methodology of teaching has been de uh, developing itself uh, for the past uh, 300 to 400 uh, centuries uh, and it has found a very methodical uh, manner. But does that work for African music? Uh, is it fair to teach uh, uh, African uh, uh, music uh, through uh, that medium only? We need to have alternatives. Uh, but still, we can use that as an element to, to communicate. That's the idea. And uh, the Global Music Academy uh, develops curriculums 
uh, based on uh, African musical examples, local examples. Just teach, teaching the skills with local uh, elements that the people grew up with, that African people uh, in their respective uh, uh, places understand uh, uh, culturally and, and, and in many ways. So um, when we do that, there are challenges, uh, actually, uh, because uh, uh, students, uh, the use is quite used to uh, and quite exposed to Western culture and uh, teaching with local culture, uh, lo local elements, uh, sometimes happens to be a challenge. Uh, that's one, uh, one challenge when, uh, that we face. And the other is also, also the content. A lot of the uh, African news today doesn't have uh, its own content a lot. Some, uh, when you talk to the young, they know a lot of the Western-oriented uh, musical pieces than they know of their own culture. So, uh, and there are no documented, uh, that's the third uh, dif difficulty. There are no documented uh, in a written format or recorded format. Uh, their musical culture is not documented. So that's also one uh, uh, problem. So uh, based on the third challenge, actually that's the ultimate goal for the, uh, this new generation of African musicians to have the uh, appropriate skills to document our own music, eh? to listen properly, analyze properly, be able to write uh, and read music and uh, use various aspects of uh, technology to record, analyze, uh, categorize and, and uh, study our, our own music and build the, co the, the, the content uh, as such. Thank you, Guillaume. Thank you for uh, clarifying uh, what I what I said earlier. Um, I'd like to ask Sitabile uh, a, a question, uh, maybe a, a bit more precise, on her experience as an African woman entrepreneur in the art field. Uh, again, what's your experience as an African woman doer? I uh, was involved. Uh, you, you've created uh, the IFA Global, uh, the Tamgiri Foundation. Um, you're you're also based uh, so you're from zimbabwe but you're you're based in the the netherlands uh, how is your experience in africa is uh, is different from your experience in uh, europe as an african woman doer and uh, eventually what do you want to see change uh, for the better thank you louise um when i lived in zimbabwe um i was a renowned artist the world came to me to buy my work and I had international claim. But when I moved to Europe, I became exotic. I could not exhibit in contemporary art galleries and museums because I fell under the category African art, which um, um, by the way, does not exist. And since my work did not look African, um, I had challenges continuing uh, my practice, and this is why I started the Tamgiri Foundation with the purpose of giving voice to artists from Africa and these diasporas in the first place, but especially to women artists as they are undervalued and marginalized. When I discovered that artists who came to the Netherlands through my foundation also had similar challenges, I then created the IFA art platform um, as an alternative to countering institutional misrepresentation. And so what I'd like to see change for the better is the removal of the colonial misrepresentation of Africa's cultural industries, meaning African art, African music, African dance, as this does not exist. Congo alone has more than 200 cultures. How can this be presented under the banner of African art or African culture? We know of Italian, Dutch, French cuisine, and we also know of Italian design. But what do we know of Congolese or Nigerian cuisine or Congolese design? The African continent is diverse and very rich. It's time we present the diversity by rebranding Africa's cultural industries. Because at the moment, we are speaking of ourselves and of our diverse cultures and its wealth under the box of African everything. And as long as we do that, it is a huge challenge 
for 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 engaging with the rest of the world because from the western perspective as an artist based here and as a curator um it's it's artists who are, are under the brand african art are undervalued and the value of the work is less and any student who goes to 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 the art academy here of of a student of color and it can be a student for example from the dutch colonies they are all advised not to produce african art and so there is a problem there and there is where we need to begin to change how we present ourselves because the the um, art from the African continent in the past was not seen like that. Art began with a spoon and ended with a sculpture, and it was the same art. So how can we re, uh, re, re, rebrand this, and how can we present this now in our in our in our um, effort to rebrand or or to to you know to reinvent our identity? Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Sitavile. Um, well, Joy, you've also founded your your own facility as uh, as Sitabile uh, with uh, with her own. Uh, yours is called the Godon Art Center in uh, Nairobi. Uh, what are its? Uh, you've said a bit earlier, but uh, again, what are its present? But also, you'll tell us future activities because you have the project of a new space being big up as uh, as we speak. Uh, what is your vision for the new space? And also, uh, in which area uh, can governments, your government, can uh, can support uh, African entrepreneurs and uh, organizations like, like yours, uh, cultural organizations like yours that uh, want to, to be created or expand? No, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that, again, you know, it seems that we are grappling with this idea of how does contemporary Africa emerge and become recognized? And the idea of creating the art center is not about a new art center. It's actually about the evolution of a practice from something that starts off because international funders are giving it money to something that is now saying, no, that is good, that helped, but it needs to root at home and it needs to be supported from home. So how do we begin to imagine an African cultural infrastructure that has endogenous roots that has roots right here at home so that is where this idea of of um the so-called new art center is coming from you know when we began to think about this question we recognized that the last time that kenya invested intentionally in cultural infrastructure was when it was a colony which is a shame kenya is now coming to its 60th anniversary in 2023 and we have not put down roots that begin to project who we are in bricks and mortar as contemporary um, nations through our arts and through our culture. So the idea of the art center is to really cement that. So it's the idea of how does civic scale cultural infrastructure sit in the city, but more importantly, how is it created? So the process for us of arriving at the design of the new art center has been participatory. What do people want to see? What does it mean for them? What should it have in there? So that is the community. And then what do artists need? What kind of spaces do they require? How do they want to interact with visitors? How do they want to show their work? That is a conversation that happens in there. But then the other big conversation, of course, that is happening in African cities is the whole question of how do we design and develop our cities? How do we create sustainable cities? And what is the role of cultural infrastructure in the creation of sustainable cities? So this new art center or this evolution of the art center has been engaging these questions at all of these layers, the question of community and providing community space and public space, the question of the artists and providing workspaces, spaces of interaction and audiences, spaces of becoming entrepreneurs. And then of course, the question of the city, sustainable urban living through uh, cultural infrastructure that speaks to the context, that speaks to sustainability. So what we need from government is actually the recognition of exactly this. And fortunately for us, the journey has been a long one. It's been 10 years. And in that process, we have very intentionally engaged city officials, county governance, national governance, because we say that we're all part of this conversation. It has to be a multi-stakeholder approach and the public sector and the government has to be in there. So some of the things that we're looking at with government is of course, how do you recognize spaces like this that are for public good, that are for public purpose? 
What does that mean in terms of legislation? What does that mean in terms of tax waivers? What does that mean in terms of partnerships with the government? So these are the, these are the questions that we're navigating with, with government right now. But we're very excited around the whole process of bringing in a diversity of stakeholders and bringing their voices and their insights and their thinking into shaping and developing a civic scale African space. Thank you, Joyce. Maybe a complementary question to what you just said. Um, what is needed to, uh, to attract investment, uh, to, to fundraise for Africa's cultural and creative industries uh, so it becomes a, a viable ones as we see in uh, other spaces? Shall I continue? Uh, yeah, for sure. And I'll, and, and I'll ask uh, Vincita Bile and Guillaume the, the same question for, uh, to finish. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I think recognition. I think that African governments have got to recognize their cultures. And I think Sitabile you know, described it very well. We must embrace our diversity. This continent is probably the most diverse continent on the globe. Let's not run away from that. Let's embrace it. Let's recognize it. And let's support that diversity of culture. And then what does that mean? It means that you must have policy in place. It means that you must have a strategy for resourcing these things from the home base. It means that you, you have to begin to think about how this connects and links with the whole idea of your own development as nations, national development. And then importantly, I think we really need to think about what is our strategy for cultural diplomacy as Africans? You know, the diplomacy is always happening the other way. We have the Alliance Francaise sitting in Nairobi. We have the Goethe Institute sitting in Nairobi. We have the British Council sitting in Nairobi. This is wonderful. I think that we are sitting as in a global village and we must connect and share. But what is our own projection of cultural diplomacy as well as Africans? And I think it starts as recognition and therefore structuring that recognition through policy, through legislation, through resourcing, and then of course action. Thank you, thank you so much. Sita Bilea, I see you uh, nodding. So, uh, so please go <laughs> ahead for, for the same question. Yes, yes, I, I, I fully agree with Joy. Thank you for, um, yeah for elaborating it so well. The only thing I can actually add to it, um, perhaps I should start by saying my experience, I have collaborated with the Dakar Biennale for many years through my foundation. And I also um, have been actively involved in, in trying to build on the ground um, um, a network of, of artist run spaces or residential art centers, as well as development of Biennales. And the last Biennale that I, Co uh, produced and curated was the Yango Biennale in Congo. And my experience with the challenges in doing all this has been around infrastructure. We need investment in infrastructure. We need funding for the arts, for the artists and for art projects. And we also need preservation of cultural heritage. When I say preservation of cultural heritage, I'm not only talking about cultural heritage from the past, what I'm also talking about is that what I noticed through my activities was that for many years, if you look at more, at least 80% of Africa's top talent is outside the continent, more than 80%. And when these artists die, their work remains in Europe. It does not return home because there are no infrastructures built or, or, or um, um, of, of how to preserve that and to, to to, 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 to then promote it. So that is really urgent. Um, and this is what I think um, is, 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 is extremely necessary and urgent to, to think about in, um, yeah, in relation to the investment of, of Africa's cultural industries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe Guillaume, please, on, on, the, on the same question to, uh, to have some last word for, for this conversation. Thanks, Louis. It's well said by Joe and Sitabile. Uh, reflecting on uh, what is uh, happening in my hometown, uh, Ethiopia, at Saraba, uh, because of political tensions, uh, the, the efforts are more regional now than uh, countrywide, like asserting our own um, regional uh, cultures along ethnic lines. And uh, there has to be uh, a, a collaborative if, uh, for a huge thing to happen. 
there has to be a co collaborative effect with all the stakeholders, the government being uh, the biggest in this. And there are several individual uh, efforts, like cultural centers uh, with individuals trying to integrate a lot of uh, the art forms, poetry, music, uh, paintings, visual arts. Some people do that uh, from a, a very uh, personal uh, initiative but that's not enough and we, uh, to, to be able to uh, assert and uh, present our uh, ourselves for other nations present our cultural philosophy our own African cultural philosophy uh, our philosophy of modernity we have to really integrate all these uh, efforts and become one and have uh, very integrated um, efforts uh, towards uh, this to, to be able to, as, as uh, Joy also uh, earlier, the, uh, how she mentioned it earlier uh, at the beginning, to, to also uh, present contemporary African culture, you know, the, the idea of uh, contemporary African cultural formation. It, it is a big idea. Our, our uh, culture is not only exotic, uh, as also Citabile uh, finds it uh, challenging to uh, present her. Uh, her work uh, it cannot only be uh, uh, viewed as stuff exotic. We have also modern stuff. We're living and we're uh, also, our art is evolving with current times. We had also our um, philosophy of our own modernity uh, and roots and everything. So we have to, it has to be told from our side, not only uh, be studied and be uh, uh, curated, presented by cultural centers uh, like the Alliance Francaise, the Goethe, uh, the British Council and others. Uh, we have to take part in that and that's the way to go forward. Thank you. Well, a big thank you to you all. Uh, a big thank you also to our technical team and Mrs. Duarte for having uh, all of us uh, invited for, uh, for this event. Uh, and also uh, the Office of the Special Advisor on, on Africa at the UN. Uh, please don't hesitate to, uh, to follow live uh, other events uh, of this year Africa Dialogue series, uh, uh, musical events and uh, panels uh, such as this one. Thank you all. <laughs>